So about a year ago, I had taken this photo, and I've talked about it a little bit more often lately. Um, I've always been captivated with the Milky Way and uh, just how amazing it looks when it's stretched across the sky. Uh, when I was camping on an island in Maine as a kid, uh, we had gotten up a few times in the middle of the night to see the Milky Way. That was probably the first time that I had ever really seen it um, in that kind of fashion and really quite that clear with the naked eye. It was beautiful. It was definitely a transformative experience as a kid. Uh, but when I posted this a year ago, and I've been recently talking about it a little bit more often lately, uh, there's two questions that usually come up is, uh, how did you take that photo and how did you process that photo? Um, and I'm paraphrasing because you know the questions are, are a little bit more complicated than that. But those are the two big questions when it comes to this photo. How I took the photos by using the rule of 500, which I'll go over in a minute, but there's a second part of this that I'll go over later in this video is going to be star stacking. So let's go over the rule of 500 first and then stick with me because at the end I'll show you about how I used a star stacking program in order to put it together. So like I said, the first part of this is going to be the rule of 500. So we're going to bring up our trusty camera here. So I have the 24 to 70 lens on this camera right now. Uh, it's at 24 millimeters. When this photo had been taken, I had used a 16 millimeter uh, prime lens, but for illustrative purposes, we'll just go with the standard kit. The rule of 500 is really simple, and I know what you're saying, great, another rule. Um, and yes, there's certain parameters that we go by, but this is a very simple one. Just takes a little bit of math. So this is a 24 millimeter lens, and if we were gonna use the rule of 500, we would take 500 and then we would divide it by the focal length of your lens. So using a calculator here, uh, we're going to take our 500 and divide it and divide it by 24, which will give us 20.8333333333. Uh, basically what this means is you can leave your shutter open for 20 seconds on this camera with the 24 millimeter lens and capture a photo of the stars without seeing any star trails or elongation of the stars. So that means that for just about 21 seconds, you can capture a single photo on your camera without seeing any of those trails. Now, if you wanted to capture, capture star trails, you would use bulb mode and go longer, stack them all together, however. But we're gonna go for something that's going to be no star trails. So it, with this lens, we would be able to take the photo for 20 seconds. So because I had taken this with a 16 millimeter lens, let's clear this out, we'll do 500 divided by 16, means I was able to keep my shutter open for 31 and a quarter seconds. Uh, this one only goes up, this camera only goes to 30 seconds, I would have to use bulb mode if I was going longer than that. But taking these photos, I was able to take it at a focal length um, that was much wider to capture more of the sky, but because I was doing that, I was able to capture photos for a lot longer without getting, like I said, that elongation of the stars. So anytime you want to use this rule, whether you're going to use a prime lens, a wide angle lens, a zoom lens, a telephoto lens, whatever, you would take that 500 and divide it by your focal length. So when you get out there and take your photos, this is where it's going to get a little bit more interesting. Um, you know, obviously you've planned your, your photo, you know where you're going to be taking it from, you know where the Milky Way is going to be and the Galactic Center is going to be because you've probably planned it out in an app like PhotoPills or, or what have you. So you know where you're going to be taking your photo from. Um, one of the first things that you want to do is you want to take dark frames. Uh, the reason for taking dark frames uh, first um, or at some point during when you're taking your photos is that way you look, put the lens cap on your camera, you set it up the way you would for taking the stars, and you take several shots of the camera with the cap on because that helps the stacking programs figure out kind of where the noise is on your center sensor. So every sensor has a noise pattern and that this allows you to find that noise pattern in order to compensate for it when you do your star stacking. So you're gonna take your, take your dark frames so that way you can compensate for that and then you just start taking your starry shots. Um, if you have an intervalometer, uh, that's a great way to do it. That's what I had done with this camera. This camera, the Canon R5, has a built-in intervalometer. So I set it and let it do, let it, do its thing. 
Um, great thing about doing that is, you know, you can take all these photos and turn them into other things. You know, I had done a reel on Instagram with it as well. Um, that was also pretty cool to do. But uh, being able to do this with an intervalometer, I was basically able to set it and forget it. Sit there with the camera, make sure it didn't malfunction, let it take, take its photos. Next up is going to be how to use the star stacking programs to put it all together into a final image. So let's get into star stacking. Uh, there's a couple of different applications that you can use for this, but let's cover the first question when it comes to star stacking as to why. Uh, the reason why you want to actually do star stacking with uh, night sky images and Milky Way images is because when you take these images in the dark, you might be using a higher ISO, creates more noise. So when you stack these images together, that's a way of actually removing some of the noise from your photo to help with your clarity and color noise and just reducing overall noise. You get more details out of it uh, when you do this. So that's one of the manual ways of reducing noise in your photos. We're using a program to help us do that by stacking all of these images together to help bring some of that noise out. This is why we did the calibration images, the dark images, bias images, in order to help de define what those noise patterns are. This application will help stack everything together to pull some of that noise out. So a few of the applications that you can use to uh, stack your photos. Uh, the first one is obvious, is going to be Photoshop. You can do image stacking within Photoshop. That's a, a great application to use for this. Um, if you're a Windows only user, there's a Deep Sky Stacker and Sequator, which is a great uh, application to use. And then if you have a, a Mac, uh, there's the Serial app, which is good on Mac and Windows. But then I'm using the Starry Landscape Stacker, which is for Mac only. These are a couple of different applications that you can use for your star stacking. There is a learning curve, so be sure to try them out, you know, get used to them before you uh, before you dive in. Um, the Starry Landscape Stacker works for me on the Mac. Uh, I found it to be pretty easy to use. I'm still dialing in some of the settings on it because some of my images come out a little green. Um, so I'm still working on some of the tint um, and, and post-processing with that. Uh, so I'm gonna pipe all of the images into uh, this application. So as you can see, the application is up, it's running, um, and it's at the, uh, the prompt for loading the, in the images. So basically, we wanna select all of our images that we're going to, to stack up here. Click open, and it's going to read all the images, bring them all in, um, and then you could do some minor adjustments to things as, as you go along. So you can reduce your exposure, increase, you know, change your luminance, color, white balance, um, and tint. So I would actually recommend changing the tint as well because uh, I've had this application uh, produce some very green images. Uh, on me, so I've actually have this set for negative 20. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I still haven't quite dialed in where where the a good range is for this, but we're going to start at negative 20. We could always fix things later on in Photoshop as well. So once we've um, set our raw file information, now it's going to read all of the images. So there's 80 images in this uh, in this set. I have some dark images in there. Um, I have a couple of recomps in there as well. But this is going to now do all of the computing to figure out where the stars are, how to align all the layers, and then you'll get an opportunity to kind of refine that. So now, now that the application has processed all of our images, we still have that green tint to it, but like I said, we can fix that later on. Uh, we can uh, now go through and kind of refine where our sky is and everything. So the first thing you could do is click on, you know, find the sky and it'll mask it out for you. Um, so we're going to paint the sky and we're actually going to fill in some areas that are in the sky that were not selected. So as you can see, some of this was also um, left out of the sky that is in the sky. So we're going to clean this up a little bit and increase the brush to, uh, to save us a little bit of time. So now that we have the sky all painted in, we know where the sky is going to be. Um, you know, I've excluded areas where there's an island in the scene and obviously the water and some of the lights off in the distance. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to, we have some options for aligning and excluding images. Uh, but for right now, I've already 
compiled all the images that we need. So we're just going to align and composite all of these together. So we're going to click on align and composite and it's going to take 65 images now and 14 dark images uh, and put them all together. So that way everything is calibrated. Um, it could help reduce that noise, like I said, and we're going to have a nearly finished photo by the time this is done. So now that this is done stacking it together, as you can see, we have a pretty good image here. A lot of clean stars in there. Like I said, the, the tint is still way off on it. Um, the first couple of times that I had tried this, uh, it was really, really bad. So little by little, I'm kind of dialing this in. So at this point, all we, can, all we need to do in, in this application is to save our current image. Uh, gives us an option to give it a name. It'll save it as, as a TIFF which we can then load into Photoshop and clean up tint and crop and, and do any other edits that we need to. So this is a quick overview of the Roll of 500 and star stacking. I hope you found it helpful. If there's any other tips or suggestions that you might have, uh, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, let me know if there's any other applications out there that uh, are capable of doing this work for you as well. Uh, that would also be nice to know about. Uh, make sure that you share it there so that way everybody else can see it. Uh, I do appreciate everybody coming along uh, for this video. Uh, give me a like on this video and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like I said, I do appreciate everybody's support. Uh, make sure to get out there, take some great photos, and I'll see you again next week. Thank you.